So there's not a lot of research that's been done on black widow spiders, which is surprising because if you say the word black widow spider, everybody knows what you're talking about. Out of the North American species, there's really not that much that's been published. And there's lots of species worldwide that really we don't know very much about at all. So I was really interested in just figuring out the basics of their mating system. So we know that they do mate, obviously, but um, we didn't really know whether the females were actually cannibalistic, um, whether the males can mate more than once, or whether they do, and whether the females can mate more than once, and whether they do, and if those things are beneficial. So there are lots of really um, cool but basic questions that really needed to be answered about their biology. Oh, here's one right here. What's this? That's a lab right there. That's what I did. How do you see that? Yeah, so you spend like a hundred hours looking for, <laughs> looking for webs and then you develop an eye for them. Uh, so we're looking in kind of grassy fields and they make their homes a lot of the time in gopher holes um, in order to stay cooler and to probably keep the eggs cooler over the really hot summer. So every day we come along and we check uh, twice a week to see um, if there's any new egg sacs in a web. So this one right here has an egg sac, and so this is what we would be looking for. It's interesting, when you come across the spiders in the field and they have an egg sac, often they have um, their arms sort of draped across it, uh, kind of protectively. See if we can get that leg to move. Oh. Here. Yeah, see? here she comes. Yeah, she knows I'm a fraud. One thing that's really awesome about black widow spiders is their webs. They're so crazy and chaotic looking, but they're actually a really cool reflection of the spider's life. In the lab, I monitor the spiders that I'm using for my trust experiment. So these are all virgin spiders, and I'm uh, subjecting them to some different treatments. Uh, so these ones here are being fed, and you can see that they've gotten pretty big. They'll get a little bit bigger by the end of the study, for sure. Um, and these ones are starving, and uh, their abdomens are starting to get pretty small. Uh, they can survive for quite a while without food, so it's not particularly cruel. Um, they'll just get small enough so that it changes the way, hopefully, that they build their webs. Um, so the big ones will have lots of re resources to put into their webs, and the smaller, starving ones uh, won't have those same resources, so their webs will be fairly thin. And we'll see whether that makes a difference as to uh, what males will be attracted to. So the research that I'm doing is actually pretty unique. Uh, there hasn't been a lot of information published about this species at all. And uh, well, I'm just um, interested in adding to our knowledge not only about black widows, but also um, to our sort of general knowledge about how mating systems work and how mate choice works and how mate choice can change and shift depending on the population demographics and the distribution of mates within the environment.